Many at times our environment is disorderly and we move around like nothing is wrong at all. Most people don't even notice the mess, while the biggest percentage are never bothered. But for the few like Maureen, living with a condition where you feel everything so deeply, this is a blessing and a curse at the same time. Maureen was born healthy and with so much love for education. Like any other scholar, her dream was to achieve her career goals at the end. However, as fate has it, her career hit a dead end, one day changing her life for good. My name is Maureen Akinyi Ochido. Yeah? I'm, um, I'm a Kenyan citizen, born in Homer Bay County. Over the county is in Nyanza province. Yeah. I'm the firstborn in a family that had six children, but my, I have a late brother yeah, uh, called Jeff. And uh, I grew up in a very staunch Christian background. My parents were Adventists, staunch Adventists, and uh, we were brought up well about the fear of God. I, 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 had, uh, I suffered asthma. Yeah. I even learned how to give myself IV injection when I was in a boarding school that was in some remote area. So I would give myself IV injection before they introduced inhalers and all that. And when I got saved, one of the crusades I was attending, I got healed, the Reynard Bonke crusade. And I also had a nice side problem, I also got healed from that. Later, uh, the, 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 um, what is it? the diagnosis came that now Maureen, you're suffering diabetes. Because when you're asthmatic, you, you, you use too much of adrenaline, and the adrenaline suppressed insulin in the blood. And I said, no, the same God who healed me will also heal me. And you can imagine in a girl's school, boarding school, you're the only person taking brown ugali, people laughing and all that. But I decided I'm not going to be discouraged. And I got healed, yeah, miraculously. I was a CU, the Christian Union, uh, chairperson, chair lady, that is Buruburu Girls, yeah, and Mary Atieno was one of my uh, mentors as a person even living with disability and a very strong character, yeah. So much later, uh, when I joined Nairobi University, I'd worked uh, uh, at an insurance company. I got a job also with an insurance company which was defunct, which is defunct now. And um, I changed my program to the parallel degree program. So I was able to work during the day and, uh, and go to school in the evening. So I graduated in 2002 and the company went under statutory management. Then I tried to be a political, but things did not work out. But I aggressively pursued my ambitions because I knew I'm a great lady and I'm born again and I know things will work for me. So when I worked for a state corporation as a personal assistant to a managing director, that is an opportunity I got. I really worked so hard and I was so vibrant and I pursued my agenda. And uh, being a personal assistant is a very, very tough job, especially uh, when you're a personal assistant to somebody with a political background it can be very terrible because the former constituents would imagine that that's still a, a, a parliamentary office or a political office. So I used to work and work and work, yes. So eventually when my boss um, left the organization under some uh, charges, of course the person who took over was his deputy. When he took over, he demoted me for job groups down. After being demoted for job groups down, he even reduced my salary by 70%. Then he purported to recover what I'd done in the past. Because I believe in protocol and order, I faced the situation. And I, I followed it up with the HR. Because I, I did not understand why that was happening to me. Because even if you're demoted, you, you don't reduce your salary. I mean, your salary doesn't reduce. And I also had other responsibilities because I had a bank loan. So the HR told me, you know, we advised him that you don't do that, but you just go and f he said, if you have any queries, you find out with him. So when I went to find out with him, it was full of insults. He told me, 
What do I mean I, uh, that uh, uh, I have a master? So what if I have a master's degree in strategic management? Yeah, Because having a master's degree, you even belong to a stupid system of education called 844, which my children don't even go through. Yeah, uh, 844s are idiots. Yeah, I don't have a master's degree, but I'm the MT. Yeah? So I sought redress from the chairman at the time, the late. I may his soul rest in peace. I asked him, Washimewa, what is all this? I'm Can you interpret to me this decision? And he told me now that you are a junior staff, I don't handle junior staff. I only deal with senior staff, there's nothing I can do. So when, uh, when the chairman of the board told me that he doesn't handle junior staff, there's nothing I would have done but to go to another level. So I appealed to the public uh, service, the PS, the head of uh, the, the, the PS at the particular ministry at the time. And I approached him and I told him, this is what I'm going through. What can you do to assist me? Because I don't understand. Can, can I please get an interpretation of this decision by this organization? Yeah? And he told me that uh, he used actually, he ethnicized it. Yeah? There was ethnicization of the whole thing. What he said, you laws are very complicated. And I wondered, oh, so... It's about now ethnicization of the process. Uh, while also pursuing the same agenda, I went to the head of public service at the time to have an interpretation of the decision that was made. Yeah? And he asked me, you mean this is happening in this country? I said, yes, it has happened to me. Yeah? I said, now, let me see. So I called the PS at the time, and I think the PS thought now I uh, had reported him to his boss. So instead he reported me to my boss, I was summoned and I was made a cleaner. I was asked to supervise cleaners at the staff quarters, the junior staff quarters. I was transferred there. I was given an overall and gumboots, yeah, to be supervising cleaners and all that. And I became a laughing stock. For Maureen, losing her job affected her immensely. But being the strong person she is, she didn't seek for psychological help, thus allowing depression to eat her inside out. So being on antidepressants, I also started gaining a lot of weight because I had to take sleeping pills before I could even close my eyes. Sometimes I would even take one week before sleeping. The headache became too much. And the antidepressants have their side effects because when I was seeing the psychiatrist, you know, the general layman, I mean, all the layman perspective is when you're seeing a psychiatrist, are you mad? So I asked him, Dr. am I mad? But I was even getting more depressed because um, you can't affor afford to dress well anymore and with the salary negative and the bank is on your case and they're thinking you're lying, why are you not paying your loan, yeah? We are going to auction you. So I started developing memory challenges which they call selective amnesia. Today, I even suffer memory challenges. So eventually, I developed seizures, which I still suffer, a neurological condition with convulsions. So eventually, I was uh, sacked because uh, the, the reason I was given depression is not an illness. You choose to be happy or sad, so it's not an illness. So uh, I, I, I didn't quit. Sometimes I would feel like uh, committing suicide. The suicidal tendencies, you'd feel like, why am I going through this? But I thank God for my family and uh, the people who got to understand me. And one time I said to myself, like, Maureen, this is not the end of the world, you know? Even though certain times I still do feel like that. But you say your story of your life can inspire somebody. Should I meet somebody who is at the height of committing suicide just because maybe they lost a relationship or the, I would tell them, relax, you know? You haven't seen anything I've, I've seen yet. So when I was sacked, one time watching news, I see I see the Simama Kenya initiative. If you Google my name on uh, Simama Kenya CEO, you'll see. And uh, after a certain, w when, when, I, when I went there for, when they were doing the launch, yeah, and I was the only lady in that forum, and they were all men, and uh, po some of them were political. And uh, when I was asked to comment on the initiative, Simama was actually an acronym that stood for Stand in Might as Mission Abide. And it was a, posi a, a positive initiative 
to get the youth from the culture of uh, handouts. Yeah. So I was ma at that time I was even pursuing my postgraduate diploma in corporate governance, which I have. And I did a research on uh, challenges facing civil. Uh, I did a research on factors affecting implementation of performance contracting in state corporations in Kenya. A case of that particular pi uh, parasitical that I'd worked for. So th the third month after Simama Kenya was just about to pick up because I became the CEO immediately when they were doing the launch. Yeah, and I was excited. God has rewarded me. Yeah. So when I was representing the patron uh, in a funds drive for the youth, I got the accident. So I was brought to hospital and I stayed for three months, yeah, because the seizures were too much. So within these three months, the Simama Kenya Initiative had just died. It went under because we were yet to even get an office. So I tried to look for all these people who are in the board, the people I knew, nobody was picking up my calls, nobody returned my details and everything. Eventually, uh, because of, uh, uh, at that time I'd even uh, sued uh, the, that particular, the, the other organization that had sacked me, because legally it was unlawful what they did. I was paid my money, I got some payment, but I wasn't reinstated. But the instructions I'd given, out of influence was that this particular bank has very good interest rates just invest in it unfortunately the bank went under statutory management with all the amount yeah so my life remained miserable again and uh, i tried reaching out to friends and including those who are in authority because i knew quite a number of them including women that I admired in political power, yeah. Maureen suffers from obsessive compulsive personality disorder, epilepsy and bipolar. OCD is a personality disorder characterized by excessive concern with orderliness, perfectionism, attention to details, and a need for control over one's environment. Bipolar disorder can be a challenge, but it can set you up to do almost anything in your life. I sought redress from all quarters, but the seizures even became worse, yeah? And the psychosocial disorder. So my furniture got auctioned for non-payment of rent. I had to move out from a house on State House Crescent and move to uh, a servant quarter, yeah? Where I still reside to date. Now, some of the challenges that I go through, despite the fact that uh, I'm even registered with the national, because the doctors uh, advised that I must be registered with the National Council for Persons with Dis Living with Disability, because it's a state initiative to cater for the persons living with disability. Now, I got encouraged also uh, much because I knew at least I'll get some redress. Now, most of the time when the government puts uh, adverts talking about qualified women and persons living with disability are encouraged to apply. I've applied for senior positions. I've applied for, because I have over 20 years of experience in management and corporate governance. Yeah? And the errors that I see, I believe that the kind of disability I suffer is not even disability. I'm just abled differently especially the psychosocial one, yeah? When you talk of I'm bipolar, yeah? I believe I'm very brilliant because I can't notice an error being committed by a traffic officer and I leave it at that, yeah? Uh, the bipolar mood disorder, what they call it, yeah? I can't go to a supermarket and look for maybe some item and I ask you as a super, supermarket attendant and you tell me, see, lise ule. You're working for the organization, and supermarkets have been there in the past. Uh, the way bipolar goes, it gives you, okay, you, you can find yourself very courageous, yeah? Now, bipolar with obsessive compulsive personality disorder, you call it, <laughs> the, the medical term call it obsessive compulsive personality, dis personality disorder. Yet I think it's excessive, obsessive, compulsive personality order not disorder. 
Maureen narrates of instances where she felt very important and took charge of situations. There's an incident on Bagazi Way when I was seated in front and the driver of, uh, of, of the matatu, because I normally sit in front because I need a space for my leg. Because I had been advised to use the elbow crutch and the knee support because the metal plates had been removed. And I'd been advised uh, that uh, should you get another fracture on that leg, because the metal plate has, has been removed, yeah, you'll be amputated. That's why you love to use the crutch most of the time. So when, this matter, the, when the police, the traffic police officer came, he was like, Where? Where Kagari Kandu? Let a license. Kila mtu ashuke. And I was rushing somewhere, I was getting late. Yeah? And I was like, what do you mean? I work a gari kando, I let a license kill a mtu ashuke. What do you mean? Then he came, kwani? Weni nani? Who do you think I am? At kwani ni amavalap? You are a traffic officer and you even don't know the traffic rules. There's nothing like overlapping in a roundabout. What kind of nonsense is this? At kwani weni nani? Shut up, who do you think I am? At a letter line since kill him to a shook. Atta, even if he has committed a traffic offense, the law is very clear. Book him into the next traffic court. Yeah? Passengers are innocent, they've even paid. At a kill him to a shook. Was shook away in the wapi? Then he went and called the, the, the other colleague. As he was calling the other colleague, I told the driver, Where they re who can pay? Because they're used to giving the money, they put money inside the driving license. Then he went, who can pay your license? Because I don't want corruption in this country. I don't want corruption. Now, you know, bipolar makes you feel you're, like you're very significant. You, you can even talk like you're the head of state. Yeah? I don't want corruption in this country. Who can pay your license? So the driver was like, no, what do I do? So the passengers, Melipa Gari. They said, yes, madam, to Melipa. Staki ujua Kenya, hakuna mtu na shuka kwa igari. Akuna mtu anashuka kwa igari. So the other colleague, the police came with the other colleague. And the other colleague came and he was like, Where mama? Shidako ni nini? And there's nothing as disheartening for perfectionists to be addressed like that. Yeah? Like, where mama? Mini. So I say, Ati, what do you mean? Mini mamako? Do I look like your mother? Was that the way you are taught to address people in Kiganjo? What kind of nonsense? Kwaani weni nani? I tell you, who do you think I am? Huh? Who do you think I am? At Kwani? Huh? I tell you, shut up. If you dare open that mouth again, I'll slap you very hard and there's nothing you do. Can you go back and man the traffic right behind us? I don't have nonsense. Yeah? So everybody's like wondering what is going on. And even that time, I'm not realizing. The, the beauty about my condition, I understand myself later, is when you discover, oh, Maureen, that was bipolar mood disorder. So I scrolled my phone and uh, I saw a name called Inspector. Somebody, I called him. I can't even remember because of selective amnesia. Sometimes I can't put a face to certain names on my phone. So I called him and uh, I'm like, um, um, Inspector, so and so, can you give me the Nairobi area traffic commandant at that time, yeah? So he, he told me, Madam Squeezy, um, I mean, Nico Migori. I told him, send me the number quickly. I don't have it on this phone. So he sent me. So when he sent me the number, I called this de gentleman that I used to see on TV. I d I'd never even had any interaction with him. So I said, Buona so and so, how are you? He said, I'm fine, Madam. Now listen, and you better listen good. I don't want nonsense. You seem to be doing a great job as far as traffic is concerned in this city. But this kind of nonsense I'm witnessing on Bagadi, we must stop immediately. Then he's like, what is it, madam? Then I told him, I want the officers on Bagadi, we replaced immediately. And I need a report from you tomorrow by 2 o'clock. I don't want nonsense. So people are like wondering, hey, who is this and uh, what am I? So Kidogo like, the, uh, after... In less than 10 minutes, because Bagadi Way City Mochari Roundabout is not far from Nairobi area traffic, uh, the guys were replaced. Some motorbike came and they were, and you are going and people are clapping on Valley Road. That's when it hit me, Maureen, that's bipolar mood disorder. Yeah? Who are you to demand a report from this guy tomorrow by two? Yeah? And I th now I saw the need why the doctors were saying I had to be registered. And you know registration is not like you just walk in and you're registered. You have to go through an evaluation process. 
so that if you should you commit a crime, it's a medical condition. So I've been able to carry out even duties within the CBD, despite the fact that I'm not I'm not a traffic officer. If there's a pedestrian crossing, I stop the the motorists and I let people cross. Yeah. Now the OCPD, the the obsessive compulsive personality disorder, they claim I suffer. I think it's an odd. I get too upset when I see traffic lights are not working. When I see the city so dirty, yeah? Yet Sonko doesn't have a deputy and I have an idea of how these things can be improved. When you look at the clock next to the National Archives, yeah? It was always showing five o'clock every day, yeah? And nobody seems to be noticing. It's a Kenyan populace that suffer a disorder, not me. Now recently I noticed two weeks ago that that clock is no longer there. Nobody's bothered <laughs> where the clock went. Nobody seems to find out. Maureen has had so many episodes of convulsions on the streets of Nairobi, but miraculously, she's never lost any valuables and good Samaritans have always been there to help. I, I know, I really know God loves me and many incidences I've had, many seizures I've had within the CBD. I found good Samaritans and I've saved their numbers as Samaritan one, Samaritan so and so. I've never lost anything, yeah? But most people fear people uh, suffering seizures, especially when you're epileptic and you fell, you've fallen on the street. Somebody would be like, ah uh ah, -uh, the Kenyans pass you. But one or two times or the three times I've had the seizures, you'd get a good Samaritan. Somebody uh, assisting you, and then they dial the last number you spoke. Or when you're gaining your conscience, they ask you, who do we call? Then you tell them, call my brother. Huh? Check the phone and call this number. Yeah, and you're assisted. So I've never lost anything. The last incident I had last month at uh, Ambassador, at, at, um, tra at uh, where was that, Afia Center, yeah? It's a lady hawker who assisted me and she called uh, uh, some people, some two ladies were nice. I, I long to meet them again. I have their number, I've tried to call and I can't read them. And they assisted me, they even took me up to, to board the Matatu. It was around 7 p.m. And uh, because I even stay alone, yeah, I, I, I managed to go. So one time when I'm walking on the streets, I see another lady, a lady hawker coming and he says, Ah, umepona. Then I'm like, what do you mean? Sini mini likuwa sismini shiro, ulianguka pale afya center last week. Uwoye, uwoye, shika hii, enda ulikuwa unataka kununua maembe, ukaniuliza ni ngapi alafu ukanguka. Ya? Na ni mindi unilikushikilia. I felt like crying, I hugged her. Ya? So she gave me even strawberries free. Then the lady, the nyanya next to her, the old lady, the she, the, the, they call her Shosho. Shosho gave me some avocados also for free. And I'm like, so I'm loved, you know. So sometimes you might feel rejected. And as a person living with disability, you, certain times, you, you'd prefer to be significant. Yeah? So si significance is one of those issues you suffer. Because you don't want to be, to feel like you are a reject in a society. Maureen is a living proof that normal is boring and perfect doesn't exist. As they say, every shadow, no matter how deep, is threatened by the morning light. All we wish is that Maureen's dawn is close. Now, if, if you've gone through what I've, I've gone through, hmm, don't give up. Yeah? Your life has just begun. No situation is permanent. And as a Christian, yeah, God will fight for you. If God is for you, there's no one who can be against you. Gospel music has been part of my source of encouragement and the word of God. People will neglect you, your friends, even your very best friends, but don't give up. Yeah? Your life has just begun. Yeah? and you never know why you're in that situation. It's not a punishment from God, but God could be molding you for a greater future. I'm nowhere yet, 
But I know in just a matter of time, it will come to pass. So be encouraged and be strong. Yeah. And one of the gospel artists and the songs like Usifuraiye, uh, we adui wangu. Yeah. Safari badu inaendelea. Yeah. Let them, let them know, prove that they were wrong to celebrate your downfall. Don't give up. 